Hey guys, welcome to Punk Rock Vibes. For those of you that have known me from my other channel, anybody curious how I started my music journey? I just feel like I have a really good story and just a very relatable story for maybe a lot of you guys watching this video, which is why I'm making this video. We normally would come out with a music video, but I'm working on an original, which if you guys haven't listened to yet, go check out the show that we made last week to get a good idea of the vibe. My journey started back when I was in elementary, as like a lot of people, and you know, I remember this one kid, TJ, he let me listen to some Green Day, he was really big into Rancid and Blink-182, he had me listen to all that stuff, and I grew up listening to early 70s, like 60s, 70s bands, and you know, like Kiss, Led Zeppelin, Deep Purple, stuff like that, and I thought that was always really cool, and I knew that I liked rock from the get-go, like I could at least say I did enjoy listening to rock, but then when I listened to Green Day, it was just like, whoa. I want to sound like those guys and I know some people don't like Green Day because a lot of their music I mean it is pretty easy but they're just like listening to them they were just really catchy and they had this sound that I really enjoyed and from a young age you're not like oh this is easy that's easy you just like okay this is good or this sucks and Green Day just happened to be really good in my opinion I really like Rancid also especially like listening to Matt Freeman bass lines that's where a lot of my walking bass lines are inspired from their bass lines from Rancid and I even back in Operation Ivy, it was just always crazy, and I've always been a huge Matt Freeman fan. That's why we did that Operation Ivy cover, Knowledge, a couple weeks ago. If you listen to a lot of my bass lines throughout the songs that I write, and there's definitely a lot of Matt Freeman influence in there now. Of course, there's some songs where I'm following the guitar, but as a bass player, you kind of have to know, you gotta have to understand when it's time to shine and when it's time to kind of chill back, let the guitar solo happen. All right, anyway, back to my story. Now we're gonna fast track all the way through high school because I took some guitar lessons and piano lessons when I was younger, but I really wasn't a fan of playing stuff like Mary Had a Little Lamb. Like, I just wanted to rock. What I really wanted to do was learn how to play songs, and then once I started playing Green Day songs and Rancid stuff, I started to understand how this whole guitar thing worked, how to formulate chords and riffs and turn that into songs, and then eventually I started writing my own songs, like really simple, stupid stuff, and you know, one thing led to another, and that's the the best part about music honestly there's a lot of stepping stones involved when it comes to music you can make anything you want nobody can judge you for it because it's your own music you can talk about anything that you want anything that you're feeling and honestly it's really great how you can just express yourself the way you want to and I don't think there's anything better than that honestly so then it wasn't until sophomore year of high school that I met up with this dude he sat behind me in math class his name was Dan remember the song that I did dedicated to Dan like even the song that I'm working on right now called Far Too Young. It's about Dan, you know, because he was such a huge influence to me musically, and you'll definitely see what I'm talking about. And if you haven't checked it out, I did a little short on the chorus of Far Too Young. It's really catchy. People seem to really enjoy it, like a lot of my friends and stuff, so definitely check that out if you haven't seen it yet. So this guy, Dan, I mean, he was a huge influence to me musically. I think he noticed that I was into pop punk and punk rock stuff, and he asked me if I played anything. I think I had, like, a sticker on my backpack or some kind of thing on my backpack that said Green Day and so I think he thought that was kind of cool and wanted to test the waters and see if I wanted to start a band or something. One thing led to another. I came over his house and we just started jamming and he said that he knew this guy named Jay and he brought him over and we had our first band practice. Now before this I was in another band but it was so shitty that <laughs> it's not even it's not even really worth talking about. I mean it was probably the worst possible situations rolled up into one band for like every band band member like the drummer could never stay in time at all I can't even explain to you I don't even have a recording of it it was that bad the singer was always like bashing the drummer that he couldn't stay she would always make some like anti-semitic remarks and it was just a really bad thing the bass player didn't really care about playing the bass she was just like she actually admitted that the only reason she's playing bass is because so she can be in a band and so she can play the easiest possible instrument now that's not to say that the bass guitar is the easiest instrument to play. That's just her take on it. So again, there's nothing really to talk about when it comes to that band. It was just a bad experience, okay? So, but anyway, I started playing with these guys, Dan and Jay, 
from high school and Jay wasn't even in high school anymore. I was like the only minor in the group. Like I was 17. Dan was 18 turning 19. I think he started school like he missed the cutoff day. So he was older. So he was 18 like turning 19. I think Jay was 21 years old or something. But I clearly remember. Now this is an interesting part of the story. One day we were in the studio, right? They had this own studio room. Like there was the band room in the basement and then there was like a hallway and then there was like another smaller room that was like the console room that they like to call it. Now, mind you, this is back when there was no Logic Pro, there was no Pro Tools, there was no FL Studios, there was no DAW, Digital Audio Workstation from a computer. It wasn't anything like that. We were using straight up 32 track rolling mixing boards or whatever mixing board you had. And now, mind you, this is also back around 2002, 2003, but I remember clearly, right? I was like in the other room and I never played the bass guitar at this point. I was always curious about it. So I picked up this super cheap, I still remember it, red Ibanez as bass guitar that Dan had lying around. He was one of those guys that had like 15 guitar. I mean, he had guitars on the floor, not on the floor, but he just had them kind of chilling on the wall. You see how I have mine on the wall right here? He would just have it sitting kind of on the floor, propped up against the wall. There was just guitars everywhere. And a lot of them were cheap guitars that he got from like pawn shops or cheap stuff that guitar was selling used or something like that. But anyway, I picked up this Ibanez guitar and I started messing around with it and just doing walking bass lines. They poked their heads out, but the way they did it was like Dan poked his head out this way. Jay poked his head out that way. And then I turn around like, like this is straight out of a movie kind of type of deal. You know, I'm like, what? They're like, you're the bass player. And I'm like, what? Like I said, this is the kind of stuff you see on a TV show. One thing led to another. I started picking up the bass, playing the bass a little bit more. I got my first bass guitar. I still remember, I think it was a Mexican made Fender 51 precision bass and butterscotch blonde. They don't make that anymore but it looked really cool. It looked legit. I know it wasn't American made, but at that point, I just wanted a really decent bass so I can just play live shows and do band practice and stuff like that. And I don't know, I really liked it. It was just a lot of fun going to band practice, playing shows, going to a different recording studio like every couple of weeks or months. And I don't know, it was just a really good time. Music started to be the only thing that really made sense to me. And like, I really wanted to surround myself with other people that were like me that loved to play music. Like, there was no competition. Oh, I'm better than you. You're better than me. It was just, I just like playing with anybody that I can play with. And I don't think music should really be competitive. I don't know. People have this competitive edge. Why can't everybody just play what they like to play? And I don't know. That's just my opinion, I guess. But anyway, Dan is the one. He got me into recording music. He seemed like he knew a lot of stuff about recording. And at the time, I mean, because I didn't know much, he did know a lot of stuff. Like he wasn't some pro engineer or anything like that, but he definitely knew a few things about recording. And of course, I'm 16, 17 years old, and I'm just looking at all these pieces of recording equipment, and I was just dumbfounded because I thought it was so complicated, and I mean, it was. Recording is complicated, and especially at that age, not knowing anything, being surrounded with all this equipment, hanging with a bunch of guys, talking, you know, recording jargon. I was just like, I was listening in like, all right, I don't really know half of what you're saying, but like, this really sounds interesting to me. And they had these big mixing boards, and I was around the time during the transition transition from analog to digital. Like at this point, analog was pretty much almost totally phased out and digital mixing boards was it was the new thing, it was on the scene, and there was no digital audio workstation. Like like I said before, there was no Pro Tools, no Logic, no FL Studios, no Reaper, or I mean, there was nothing like that even available at the time. This is 2002, mind you. But I mean, I always thought recording music was just really interesting. I like the idea that I can play the drums, the guitar, the bass, the sing, and just put all, I like, the idea of playing all these instruments, one person, and just putting it all together and make something cool out of it. And at the time, my voice was just, it was just really bad. I wasn't any kind of a singer. I never really took the time to learn how to sing until maybe like last year or so, and that's how I got better at singing. And I'm gonna let you listen to the difference between this Taylor Swift cover that I did and the new song that I'm working on. I mean, it's like night and day, and I'm not saying I'm the best singer, I'm not. But if you listen to stuff that I did, even 
even a year or two ago to what I'm doing now, I have a lower voice. So I knew that I, it's harder for me to sing higher notes. So what I'll do is I'll drop my guitar maybe half a step and I'll just start singing and I'll stay within my range. I'll stay in key, practice my dynamics and my voice and stuff like that. And now I'm actually listenable, you know what I'm saying? So if you listen to a lot of the new stuff, the music videos that I did now, I mean, it definitely sounds pretty good. Now I'm going to let you listen right away to the Taylor Swift cover. I'm only going to play a couple seconds of it. And then I'm going to play you the new music video thing that I just did a couple of days ago. So check it out. I the grass and works the graveyard shift to love the people who left the world far too young. Our memory live on. All right, so you listen to both examples and as you could tell, my voice definitely got better. I think I finally found the voice within me and I think that's really the most important thing. Like when you're, this isn't a singing video or anything. I'm just, cause we're kind of talking about it now. I think singing is something that you have to find your voice. And I think a lot of it stems with not having confidence. I think a lot of people can sing. I don't think everybody can sing, but I think a good majority of people can sing. But I think people either lack the confidence or they don't understand the fundamentals of singing. And that's kind of what I've been practicing on for the last year. All right, but anyway, back to the story. I knew recording music was a very tedious process and you know, you gotta understand a lot of different things when it comes, I'm not even talking about compression, EQ, I'm not even talking about that stuff. I'm talking about learning the instruments, putting it all together, and then even then learning the fundamentals of recording music. But anyway, 20 years later, here I am. And honestly, even if my videos don't get thousands of views or anything like that, I'm happy to be able to produce my own music that I can listen to that I can put out there for you guys to also listen to and I did do the Sum 41 cover of Landmines and I think I got like over 500 views from that and the One More Time by Blink-182 I think that got over 500 views and in my mind what I would do is I would split that number <clears throat> sorry my voice is kind of cutting out so if I get 500 views a video what I'll do is I'll split that number so that'd be 250 and in my head I'm thinking okay that could be potentially like 200 250 people that just watch my video so and then whenever I do my next music video I'm like okay I could potentially be playing for 200 to 250 people and that's a pretty decent amount like if you're doing a local show or whatnot so I kind of put myself in that frame of mind and I don't look at just the numbers I don't look at 500 as a number I'm just looking at these are actual people listening to my music and even though there are going to be people that don't enjoy my music it seems like a majority of you that are listening really dig it especially from the comments and everything and you guys are what inspire me to make music. Even those of you that are just watching the video and not commenting, the fact that you guys are watching the video, it makes me feel really good about myself. I think when I started really getting into music with different bands and the transition into being a recording artist, I just think I started at the right time because I was in it, like I said before, in the tail end of the analog days, that transition to using digital mixing consoles, and then the transition to using stuff like Logic Pro or Pro Tools. And those of you wondering, I use Logic, okay? I've been learning how to use Pro Tools in my spare time, but me personally, I prefer using Logic because it's just easier and I know how to navigate through it really easily. And it takes a little, I'm gonna be honest with you, it takes a little bit of extra time for me to learn certain things. And that's the reason why I like Logic. It's just user friendly for me. Once you learn something, you just wanna focus on making the music. You don't wanna focus on learning other DAWs. I know some people like to learn every DAW under the sun, not really me. Pro Tools is definitely something I wanna get better at, but for now, Logic Pro is what I've been using. There's some clips in some of my music videos where you see a shot that show kind of like the side of my head and you can see me working on the music. You can see the, the entire doll. You can see right there that I'm using Logic Pro. So that's pretty much what I, I've been using that for like the last eight years or so. I truly feel like music is something that you really have to enjoy. Like if you're trying to make music for the sole purpose of making money, you're beat. It's just not gonna work out. Honestly, I feel like your passion for music and constantly trying to better yourself, that's what's gonna lead you to being a successful musician. You know, you're always learning something new and that's something I really enjoy about it is a stepping stone for music. And I know it's kind of weird to say that, but like it really is a truism because you're learning stuff every day to be a better musician. But anyway, that's how I started learning music and making music. And that's what really got me into pop punk at a young age. And 20 years later, you know, from 17, I'm 37 years old now. I still love it. I love pop punk. I love punk rock. I love ska music also. The bass lines you hear in ska music is awesome. It's, it's happy. It's, it's upbeat. I really love upbeat music. That's, I think, 
that's why I really like pop punk and punk rock so much. It's honestly just a part of me. And one thing I want to just tell you guys is if there's anybody out there that kind of trashes you or doesn't like the music that you listen to or doesn't like the music that you play, honestly, it doesn't really matter because it's all about you. Music is out there for us to all enjoy. But I'm going to close out this video because I'm already hitting like 23 minutes on this camera. I know it's, it's a really long video. This is the only video where I'm actually talking and I'm not doing a music video. If you guys did enjoy this story of how I got into music and how I got into recording, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Turn on your post notification bell. So when I do come out with music videos and stuff, you guys will know right away. And in case you're wondering, do we have a schedule? I don't want to say we do have a schedule, but lately we've been uploading, like since the channel started, we've been uploading on Mondays, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I don't know how long that's going to last for. It depends on how busy I am, how much time that I have that week to work on a cover or work on an original song. So whenever I do upload videos, it will always, the time will always be the same. It's going to be 2 p.m. Eastern. I just can't promise that it's going to be on Monday or every Tuesday. It's really tough to stick to a schedule in, you know, if you're like a musician or you're doing anything artistic because it takes time to create and I want to produce the best stuff for you guys. I don't want to just half-ass anything and then it sounds like crap, you know what I mean? I want to give you guys some good quality music out there that you can all enjoy. But anyway, I'm done rambling. I want you guys to all stay rocking, stay creative, have fun. I'll catch you in the next one and don't forget, we're going to be trying to release Way Too Young by next week, hopefully. So, later guys.